invite Trey Andre up here to talk to you all and start the programming. Thank you, Trey Andre. Can you give it up for Trey Andre? Hi, everyone. Oh my gosh, the Femmes, aren't they amazing? Yeah, can we get it a little better than that? The Femmes, aren't they amazing? Hi, everyone. Good evening. Welcome. Get on here. No, 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 you've got your own mic. Oh, I got my own mic? Okay, brilliant. Ready? Uh -huh. Okay, 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 okay. All right, all right. Hi, everyone. Good evening. Welcome. Uh, so wonderful to see you all this evening. My name is Treandre Carmel Valentine. My pronouns are he and they. I'm the executive director of the Massachusetts Transgender Political Coalition, or we like to say MTPC. And welcome to the 14th Professionals for Trans Rights. Yeah. Uh, this is my co-MC, Zari. I'll let Zari introduce themselves. Thank you so much. My name is Zari at Leonardo Lock. My pronouns are they, them. I'm a board member on MTPC. Um, any, do I do anything else or just? Say whatever you want to say about oh, yourself, baby. Um, sure. Um, I've been a resident trans for about six years. And, <laughs> and um, currently I do racial equity work with the city. So I do trainings and stuff like that. So that's my day job. Yes, give it up for Zari. Zari, y'all don't know this, but Zari has graciously stepped in at the very last minute to co MC with me because Justice Williams is sick and he couldn't make it. Um, and we just want to shout him out who booed Justice? Oh, booed the being sick. Yeah, oh. yeah, 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 yeah. I was yeah, about yeah. to say, no, community care is staying home when you're sick. <laughs> Absolutely, and so just want to send Justice some love. Can we just send Justice some love? Yeah. Amazing, amazing. Okay, so we're going to start our program. We're going to start off with a land acknowledgement. And pass it off to Zari. Absolutely. Um, so our land acknowledgement. MTPC operates on the ancestral and unceded lands of the Massachusetts, Mohican, Nosset, uh, Nipmunk, Pawtucket and Wampanoag peoples. We recognize these lands are currently occupied by the Commonwealth, which appropriated its name. We honor the indigenous ancestors and indigenous people who reside here and steward this land, despite a painful history of genocide, forced removal, and colonization. In addition, we know that indigenous people have immigrated to this region largely because of global conditions created by US imperialism. We believe that global imperialism and white supremacy have concluded to create and sustain gender norms. MTPC commits to undoing the legacy of colonial colonialism by challenging and unlearning the ways in which colonialism shows up in our work and in our lives. We believe our liberation depends on this too. It would also be an insult to do a land acknowledgement and not acknowledge the moment in time which we are witnessing genocide, displacement, and horrendous atrocities in Palestine, Sudan, Congo, Tigray, and Haiti, and other areas across the globe. To this resistance, fighting for liberation, we are here with you. My bad. Sorry. Um, we also wanted to do a little bit of housekeeping, so please note that there are emergency exits behind me and on the far right side of the bar. Follow the red signs in case of an emergency, and restaurants can be found all the way in the back around the corner past the back bar. To keep all of our guests safe, we kindly ask that you please wear masks over your mouth and nose at all times, unless you're eating or drinking. And there are limited masks available at the registration table. Do we still have masks over there? We think so? Okay, if you need a mask, you can go over there. And as a reminder, this event is being photographed. Can our photographer please raise uh, their hands? Oh, you're right here. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I feel like I was on Ellen for a second, Jesus. <laughs> um, okay, um, so yes, this is our photographer. If you don't want to be in photos, please make sure that you have a red sticker on your name tag. And if you are taking pictures, please be mindful of anyone who may not want to be in photos. 
And if flash photography is an accessibility concern for you, please let us know ASAP. And don't forget to stop by our registration table. We got pronoun pins for $5. If you were here last year, they were also $5, so inflation has not hit us here. <laughs> You can also learn about more ways to get involved with MTPC and sign up to be a volunteer. You'll get to hang out with us. I think we're pretty cool. <laughs> we also want to give some shout outs to the FEMS for providing this evening's entertainment. They'll be back, don't worry. Yes, snaps. Fresh Food Generation for providing our meal for this evening, snaps to them. Crystal Ballroom for this beautiful space, snaps to Crystal Ballroom. Jillian, who is our event consultant, where are they? Yes, right over there, raising their hands. Also our ASL interpreters, Brenna and Gabe, and all of our sponsors for their support. And I'll pass it back to you. Thanks, <laughs> thanks, thank you. Okay, y'all, let's get real. Words are just words until they are weapons of war until they are erasers at the end of a pencil trying to remove you from history books, scrubbing so hard that the paper tears. But if you look hard enough, you can still see the lines, the words, the lives and stories they try to erase and white over. We are permanently etched. A young person reached out to MTPC, concerned for their peers and their future. They wrote, hearing about all of the transphobia and anti-trans bills and laws that different red states, red states are trying to pass. It scares and saddens me to think of all the trans youth that live in fear of discrimination and these laws that attack them and non-binary kids like me. Yes, Massachusetts is a blue state, and it's more accepting than others. But what if a conservative gets into state office? What if someone who thinks of trans youth as monsters becomes Massachusetts mayor or another important figure? It's an uncomfortable thought that makes me and other non-binary and trans kids nervous about our futures and potential bills against us passing. I may be just another LGBTQ student from some random place in Massachusetts, but I want to be able to help trans kids in some way. I want to be able to keep them from worrying about anti-trans laws and transphobia from their peers. I was simultaneously heartbroken and inspired. This broke my heart because the more I do this work, the more I realize that there will always be those who don't understand us and choose to fear us, and those who do understand and choose to hate us. It's a hard thing to reconcile when your job exists so, solely because of transphobia, because of racism, and good old colonialism. But we will not be slowed. We will not be silenced by those who govern. We will not, ignorance, we will not let ignorance and hate shove us into the shadows. We will not live in fear. Our light will not be dimmed, our joy will not be stolen, and our tongues will never be tamed. We will not and cannot be erased from history, the present moment, the future, because we are permanently etched. I was also inspired because our youth are the future. They are of character, passionate, unapologetic, intelligent, and motivated to build a better world. Our youth and our students who are protesting right now, right now at this very moment, 
are out there leading the movement towards liberation. And it fills me, it fills me to see our young people fighting for a future that is vibrant, that is just and equitable. A future that is liberated from the clasps of, col of colonization. One where trans youth are free to explore and discover who they are authentically. One where gender affirming care is the standard of care across all of our healthcare systems. One where trans people are valued and employed for their talents and their skills. One where every trans person has a safe and nurturing place to call home. One where black trans women have a life expectancy of 95. <laughs> One where no trans elder is isolated or forgotten. I know you are all here because like me, you believe in this dream and have hope that this future can become a reality. You know, I ain't got to tell you, trans people across, trans and non-binary folks across the US are facing unprecedented challenges and threats to our safety, our well-being, and our rights, including right here in Massachusetts. We are witnessing a disturbing rise of anti-trans sentiment and violence from discriminatory policies and rhetoric to acts of violence and erasure. Our communities are under siege, but we will not be slowed or silenced. You know, when I get into the deep voice, it's serious. <laughs> We will not be shoved into the shadows. We will not live in fear. Our light will not be dimmed. Our joy will not be stolen. Our tongues will never be tamed. We will not and cannot be erased because we are permanently etched. As the oldest active tra trans advocacy organization in the country, MTPC has been at the forefront of fighting for the rights and dignity of transgender and non-binary people in our commonwealth for over two decades. Can you believe that? Over two decades. Yes, give it up. Our work extends beyond legislation and political advocacy. We are dedicated to ensuring the lived equity of all trans and non-binary individuals in Massachusetts. However, the challenges we are facing today require additional resources and support. As we confront the growing wave of discrimination and violence, MTPC is committed to expanding our programs and services to meet the urgent needs of our communities from emergency financial assistance to legal support for name and gender market changes, from job skills training to healthcare advocacy, our programs are lifelines for our community members, especially those most vulnerable amongst us. But we need you. We need each and every one of you because we cannot do this work alone. Healing doesn't happen alone. Community doesn't happen alone. Liberation does not happen alone. And by supporting MTPC, you will directly support our efforts to empower community members, our work to challenge systemic inequities, and build a more inclusive and affirming society for all. Our dream for a vibrant, just and equitable future is possible. Together, we can make it happen. You know? Yes. We can make a difference and create a future that is for us and about us. 
So, you all know why we're here, right? We need to raise some money. Yes. And so we are very excited to announce that three wonderful people, Robin Oakes, Lucas Sanders, and an anonymous donor have pledged to match $6,000 in gifts tonight. Yes, that's right. If y'all collectively give 6,000 tonight, that will be double to 12,000. I love a double. Yes. So right now, right now, I want you to take a look at the program cards that's on your tables. Somebody missing a program card? Somebody's missing a program card. Um, on the back, there is a QR code that you can scan to give online with a credit card, debit card, or PayPal. If you want to give cash, we love cash, right? Who does that? <laughs> cash or a check. Any of our wonderful staff members, volunteers, or board members who are carrying around a bright green gift bag will gladly take it. Let's see, MTPC staff, volunteers, and steering committee members, raise your hand. Yes, break with a, with a big green bag, yes, yes. So those folks will be going around collecting your money. Um, let's see. Okay, yes, so any of those folks will be able to assist you and accept your donations. Okay. You can also take your cash or your check over to our registration table, where you can also make a cash donation using Venmo. Yes, yeah, see? Dory waving their hand over there. Dory and DJ. Yes, <laughs> by the door. All right, so I'm going to give you all a few minutes to do that now. Yes, yeah, scan the QR code, give some money. Anybody want to give some cash right now? Want to write a check right now? I will wait. <laughs> All right, I'm hearing some murmurings. I'm hearing some rustling of checks. All right. I see, I see uh, some steering committee members going around with, us. I'm just gonna say gift bags. What do we call those? I don't know. Donation bag, money bags. <laughs> money bags. All right, all right. Thank you all so much. Thank you so much. Listen, this is not going to be the only ask this evening, all right? So you have plenty of time to donate. <laughs> Next, I would like to invite MTPC's Director of Programs, MG Zhang, to share more about our programs and services. Thank you, Trey Andre. Welcome, welcome, folks. Welcome, Nya Zhang, folks and friends. It is lovely to be here tonight. Thank you for joining us for MTPC's 14th annual Professionals for Trans Rights and my third Professionals for Trans Rights today. I'm MG Zhang, and I use they, them, theirs pronouns. Thank you. I'm MTPC's Director of Programs, and I have the distinct privilege of leading the programs and services that build trans power for our communities. I need to start by acknowledging the difficult landscape we are currently situated in. There are countless joyous aspects to our work that I will be sharing in a moment, but it would be irresponsible of me not to name the single most difficult part of my job, the scale and frequency that I witness trans suffering. Across the United States, 
With the rise in anti-trans bills, rhetorics, and sentiments, we are witnessing the attempted genocide of transgender, non-binary, and gender diverse people. At the same time, we are seeing ongoing genocides and armed conflicts at Palestine, the Democratic Republic of Congo, South Sudan, Yemen, Afghanistan, and far more places than humanly imaginable are experiencing right now. At MTPC, we acknowledge that trans activism is intertwined with and dependent on the liberation of all. That none of us are free until all of us are free. And we remind ourselves that this work toward liberation, this activism, this advocacy is both joyful and painful. What keeps me going day by day is knowing that joy prevails, that trans and queer joy is a force to be reckoned with, that the beauty and brilliance in being of trans experience is beyond cisgender comprehension. The single greatest aspect of my job is being a generator of trans joy for myself and others. Every single day, I get to witness joy prevail. I get to contribute to the remarkable impact MTPC's programs and services have on trans people near and far. Tonight is about celebrating this impact and furthering our ability to cultivate new and thriving trans futures. I wanna share what our work looks like these days and what we've been up to since we gathered here last May. MTPC is in a period of exponential growth and we're doing some really cool things. In our Identity Document Assistance Network, or IDA Network, we have been working to make legal name changes and affirmation on identity documents accessible for everyone, a process that can be confusing, expensive, and isolating. One of the newest ways we've been doing this is through in-person and virtual name change clinics. In the last year, MTPC has assisted 186 people with their legal name change petition in Massachusetts. We have distributed $11,699 in financial assistance to trans and non-binary people to cover their name change expenses. We have grown our partnership with Namesake Collaborative, a local trans-led business demystifying name changes with close to 500 active users on the Namesake website. We have trained 22 community members on how to provide name change assistance to people in their communities. And I hear from people all of the time who tell me, without MTPC, I don't think I would have ever changed my name. Thank you for making sure I'm not alone in this process. <laughs> our impact continues through our REACH emergency funding program. We launched this program as a pilot in September 2023, less than a year ago, to address the financial inequities and wealth disparity experienced by trans people. We thought this would be a small scale program, and boy, were we wrong. In the first three months of launching, we received 916 applications with requests that exceeded $700,000. That's $200,000 more than MTPC's current operating budget. To date, we have distributed $19,710 to 46 Massachusetts residents, a figure we are both proud of and know is just a drop in the bucket. We've been up to so much more, but perhaps most notably, this time last year, I shared with you that we were immersed in our Trans Leadership Academy spring program. We run the Trans Leadership Academy to create opportunities for trans leadership within MTPC and within our broader communities. I'm incredibly proud that this year, we have two Trans Leadership Academy graduates more deeply involved in MTPC. DJ Baker, who you likely saw at the registration table, has been working with us this spring. I love you, DJ. And Rebel Lion, who is a member of our steering committee. Tonight, we're also blessed by the presence of many other graduates of the Trans Leadership Academy. Graduates, where are y'all at? Make some noise. Woo! We are seeing in real time the goals, visions, and dreams we have in actualizing thriving trans futures come to life. What it looks like when we invest in trans people, how all of us rise when we lift from the bottom, how trans flourishing is within us and around us. Just look around tonight. 
Thank you for celebrating with us at MTPC's 14th Professional for Trans Rights. Your presence is a testament to MTPC's continued impact, and it only fuels our commitment to always lead with love. Thank you so much. Thank you to all of my MTPC team. It is such a pleasure to work with everyone. I'm back for a quick second. I just want to ask everyone to please welcome MTPC's Director of Development, Kelsey Gustra. Thank you. I'm gonna set my phone down here. Okay. Thank you so much, Zari. Uh, and thank you, MG. Um, I'm so grateful um, that I get to work and partner with such mindful and thoughtful leaders every day. Like literally now, as of recently, four days a week, which is great. Um, <laughs> Treandre and MG, thank you so much for bringing joy and dedication to MGPC, to our work, um, and to the community that we're building. And that's all y'all. So thank you so much for being here. <laughs> um, thank you for coming to help us celebrate our awardees and for being supporters of MTPC and investing in our work uh, for trans and non-binary base daters. Um, if you haven't met me yet, as Zari said, my name is Kelsey Grunstra. Um, please use she, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> uh, please use she and her pronouns for me and I am MTPC's Director of Development. Um, <laughs> so before I get started, I have a brief update on our matching gift which is that out of the kindness of your hearts, um, we have already raised uh, an additional $3,336.58. That's, you know, that is more than halfway to us getting to 12,000. And thank you all so much for giving um, out of the kindness of your hearts. Uh, if you have been plugged in with MTPC for the past uh, year or so, you've probably heard us talk about new trans futures. You might have even bought one of our t-shirts last year. Uh, new trans futures originated as an idea for a fundraising, fundraising campaign that would fund our work that builds power for the trans and non-binary people of Massachusetts. We're talking economic, political, and cultural power. But now it has evolved past that. It has become one of the main focuses of our work. We want to go beyond simply building a world in which trans people are recognized by the government, by the healthcare industrial complex, and are legally protected against discrimination. We want to build a new future where all trans and non-binary people are able to thrive. <laughs> a future where we are presented with the same opportunities as our peers. A future where the world around us doesn't just accept us, which is clearly no small feat in and of itself. I mean, you heard what Trey Andre was just saying. But it is also affirming of us and celebrates us doing what we're all here doing tonight. And as MG just shared, our vision is for a world in which each and every one of us are liberated from disparity, oppression, and violence. To build this world, this new trans future, we will need to make our own tools and shape this world with our own hands. This is why MTPC is so focused on developing and investing in trans leadership. It's also why we know that we cannot make this investment in our community without simultaneously also advocating for systemic change. This is why this year we are going to hire both a programs manager and an advocacy and organizing manager. Because we know that we cannot leave our community waiting while we advocate for larger scale change. Because, but we also know that if we are not out there fighting for that change ourselves, we won't be there to shape that future. The kicker is that not only can we not do this alone, it's that to do this, we are actively working against deeply ingrained systems of oppression and attempting to work around and dismantle them. When we lost hundreds of thousands of dollars of state funding for the Trans Leadership Academy this year, we realized that government funding was never going to provide us the ability to craft this new future. 
<laughs> Felt. <laughs> it may feel trite at this point. If you've been around the nonprofit scene in Boston, you know Audre Lorde has so eloquently exposed the master's tools will never dismantle the master's house. If you are here today because you want to build with us and you are able to invest in this future, I implore you to make a donation <laughs> that will help us hire these new staff people, that will allow us to remake the Trans Leadership Academy and will get us back in the State House to make it known that our community will not settle for less than liberation. Yeah. So again, I'm going to ask all of our staff members and volunteers to raise their hands in their bright green bags so you can find them. If you have not given yet or you are driven to give more, um, the, any of these lovely folks um, can take cash or check, as Trey Andre said. Scan that QR code. And yeah, let me, let me see if we've got any more going on in this. Uh, in this matching gift, let's see here. Okay, thank you so much. It was two dollars. <laughs> we love a deal. It's true. All right, let's see here. Let's see what's going on here. Well, well, well. I am happy to say that. Oh my. This is too much math for me to be doing on stage right now, y'all. Well, I can definitely tell you that we have met our goal of $6,000, which that means that's $12,000. But let me just tell you that we're not done there because it costs a lot of money to hire people. And let me tell you, we are not trying to be like other nonprofits. We are trying to pay ourselves equitably because we are here to support trans people in Massachusetts and we are trans people in Massachusetts. So, you know, anyway, all I have to say is thank you so much to all of y'all uh, for your generosity. Um, and I am going to hand it back over to Trey Andre. Thanks, Kelsey. Give it up for Kelsey. Thank you so much for all that you do. Listen. Honestly, <laughs> I really wouldn't be here if it wasn't for Kelsey and MG and DJ and L and our steering committee members. Honestly, they, they make this work so much more loving, so much more loving. Anyway, now it is time for my favorite part of the evening, the awards. Yeah. Yes. Okay. You know, this country and the state of Massachusetts have benefited off the backs of black and brown folks and queer and trans folks, right? Just one year. Uh, many in our community, they, they go unrecognized and unappreciated. And tonight, we would like to recognize and honor those in our community who are making a difference. The first award we would like to present is our in-service award, which is given to a person, a group, or organization whose work and contributions have benefited the trans and non-binary communities throughout Massachusetts. I need to pause one second, y'all. I realized that I can't remember if I put the awards in the back. <laughs> Can somebody help me out? <laughs> are the awards in the back or are they at the registration table? Because I don't know. Help me, Zari. How about that green line? Okay, all right, and while we're figuring this out, I will, they're back, oh, thank you, I appreciate it. Okay, so for our in-service award, get ready, Carmen. 
Carmen Polino is the most sought after foster care parent within the Commonwealth. Yes, yes. She has opened her home to trans youth who need a loving, caring, and affirming environment. She's a staunch advocate for youth, trans rights, and disability justice. A mother of five, Carmen proudly lives her life through a lens of love, kindness, and respect for all in her community. Drawn to uplifting others, Carmen has dedicated her career to supporting her community. She believes that every child, every child, deserves endless love, support, and an affirming home. She believes that every child has an inner spark. Her and her husband, Roj, opened their home as foster parents to children who identify as transgender and gender nonconforming. She also happens to be the mother of last year's Trans Excellence Awardee, Ashton Mota. Yeah! Man, brilliance just runs in that family, you know? It is my absolute honor to present to Carmen with the In Service Award. Carmen, come on up. Good evening, everyone. My name is Carmen, and my pronouns are she, her, and ella. Thank you, MTPC, for honoring me with this award. My favorite job in the world is being a mother to my amazing children. Tina, Jade, Ashton, London, and Neve. I love you guys with my whole heart. Thank you for embracing me and teaching me to see the world through different lens. I now would like to leave you all with this poem by Dave Willis. Family isn't defined only by last names or by blood. It's defined by commitment and by love. It means showing up when they need it the most. It means having each other's backs. It means choosing to love each other, even on those days when we struggle to like each other. It means giving up giving up, it means never giving up on each other. Thank you so much. The next award that we would like to present is the Trans Excellence Award. This award is given to a trans or non-binary community member who has made significant contrib contributions to their community or profession. Taj M. Smith is a black transgender educator and founder of Rooted Respite, a burnout support community for activists, DEI professionals, and others working to dismantle systematic oppression. Deeply curious about the ways faith and identity interact to produce hopeful futures. His work explores the spaces where spirituality, justice, and identity overlap. His work has also appeared in Believe Out Loud, Huffington Post, and the Q Christian Fellowship. So it's my pleasure to present the Trans Excellence Award to Taj M. Smith.
Uh, hi. Thank you. I didn't prepare a speech because um, as much as I am a preacher, I um, am actually not one for speeches. So um, thank you to MTPC. Thank you to everyone who has been in this fight for liberation for as long as you have. And thank you for um, recognizing uh, me tonight, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for being here. I love when people say they didn't prepare a speech and then they just say something very heartwarming. <laughs> All right, so now we're on to the final award of the evening. And could you believe we're, our program is actually almost over? Like last year, the program went on and on and on. So we made some changes. Oh my gosh, we couldn't get rid of those flip-flops from last year. That's why we don't have a raffle this year. <laughs> okay, so now for the final award of the evening. It is the Trans Activist Award. This award is given to a trans or non-binary community member for their unyielding commitment to advocacy for the rights of trans communities and other disenfranchised individuals and communities here in Massachusetts and beyond. Tisha Purdy is a proud Boston-born trans woman of color. Yes, give it up who has been advocating and performing in this community and surrounding areas for 21 years strong, y'all. Yes! She is a chosen mother, auntie, a godmother to many, and has nurtured our community's young hands-on because she vowed that she would not allow any who have been turned away to struggle without support. Now, when our next presenter found out that we would be honoring Tisha Purdy tonight, she reached out and asked if she could present the award. So please welcome a staple in our community and a former member of MTPC's steering committee, Chastity Bowick. Good evening, everyone. All right, we're gonna try that again. Good evening, everyone. All right, that's better. I am so excited to be here with, to present this award to a woman who has mothered so many in my community and others. Tisha Purdy, AKA Tisha Boo, has been a staple in Boston transgender communities for decades, not only as she graced us with her supreme showgirl talents, she has literally opened her doors to assist homeless LGBTQIA plus individuals and families. You can clap for that. Mm -hmm. She has so shown tremendous vulnerability and transparency when it comes to her own personal struggles and has used those times to not only uplift herself, but to uplift those around her. I was given a godmother at birth, but she disowned me when I started my transition. But little did I know, room was being made in my life for my true godmother. <laughs> the one and only Tisha Boo. I knew it was meant to be when one day out of nowhere, she started calling me Buttercup. The only per other person who ever called me that was my mom, which Tisha never knew. Thank you for sharing so much of yourself with us. And now it's time that you get to smell the roses. We celebrate you today as a trans activist, a mother, a performer, and a person who is always willing to share her last with someone who may not have. Boston, Massachusetts, it's time for us to make sure she feels the gratitude, love, and appreciation for her selflessness 
and dedication to not only her community, but all communities up underneath the LGBTQIA plus umbrella. <laughs> So please join me in saying happy birthday, because today is her birthday as well. And congratulations on the Massachusetts Transgender Political Coalition 2024 Trans Activist Award. Congratulations, baby. I too didn't prepare a speech, <laughs> but I'm so overwhelmed uh, right now. Uh, so it's gonna be not as long, y'all know I can talk. <laughs> uh, thank you to NTPC and to everybody who ever so humbly thought about me uh, to get this award. I never doing what I was doing, we was just doing it. We wasn't thinking about Oh, one day we're gonna get an award or whatever. We just did it out of love and care, you know, and you know, um, this past year has been, year and a half has been a very difficult year, but I feel that my divine higher calling, God, whatever you wanna say, my God put me on that path because um, he started to see me go astray because of being weary from the work, because we can get weary from doing this work. Um, even if you know it or not, we can get tired, we can get, you know, bogged down or feel less than or feel unappreciative, and that does take a toll on us. And I felt like that uh, God basically turned it all around for me so that it was like the people that you supported know you can't look for them to support you back. You have to look within yourself and find who you are again. And from that, I'm starting to get all these awards. I'm like, I'm not old. Why y'all keep, why y'all keep doing this? But it was, for me, a reminder to who I am, who I have been in this community, what I forgot, and what I am reclaiming as of this year. So, it's not over for me, so y'all can keep giving me these awards, but I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> but thank you all from the bottom of my heart. I love you all, and thank you for all the birthday wishes as well. I appreciate it, thank you. Tisha, stay right here, please. Stay right here. So, I mean, first of all, let's get into this. Let's get into this. Come on now. Okay, okay. All right, so it's Tisha's birthday. We got her a cake. Somebody. Okay. We got you a cake. Now, this cake is just for Tisha. It's her choosing if she wants to share with anybody, but this is all for her. And it's heavy, y'all. It's a heavy cake. And we got you this bouquet. It's, be I mean, the bouquet is called, I mean, let me read the card real quick. Well, I know it because I wrote it. The bouquet is called Gaia, which you know in Greek mythology means earth, means mother. And it is so appropriate because you have nurtured so many in our community. And you deserve all of the awards, all of the awards. Thank you so much for just being you and for giving of yourself to us. You are blessed and cherished. Thank you. Thank you. 
Now we're gonna have to hide this cake from y'all. Okay, all right, all right, all right, all right. Actually, let's sing happy birthday to Tisha. Y'all ready? One, a two, a three. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Tisha. Happy birthday to you. Now go get lit. <laughs> all right, y'all, all right, y'all. Oh, wait, that's it. Oh, no, that's not it. That's not it. That's not it. So uh, just uh, another round of applause and congratulations to all of our award honorees, Carmen, Taj, Tisha. We are so grateful for each of you and for all that you do for our community. All right, y'all. So y'all know Justice Williams, right? You know, he is such a powerful brother. He was gonna come up here and get y'all to empty out your pockets for us. But he's sick. And so, you know, we'll have to make do with me. <laughs> um, do you want? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so right now, actually, what we're gonna do is uh, get all of the MTPC staff and steering committee on stage right now. Come on up, come on up. You can come out through the side back here. Please, please, come on up. Yes, it's you too, L. Come on up. Oh, look at your faces. Yeah, I love y'all. I want y'all to see Trey Andre's face real quick when I tell you this, that not only did you get to that 6,000? But y'all, y'all donated us $12,000. That means we got $18,000, baby. Thank you so much. And uh, I'm gonna give it back to Trey Andre. Well, I mean, I, I mean, I don't know what to say now. Like, um, y'all are amazing. Um, I was gonna read the thing that Justice wrote. Do y'all want me to read the thing that Justice yeah. wrote? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it says my name in here, and that feels kind of weird. Somebody else read the thing that Justice wrote? DJ. DJ, give it up for DJ. I would like to invite this, okay, mm, okay, well, we are here on stage. <laughs> um, oh, no, we're fine. Um, it's important uh, for us to recognize and appreciate those who've been working tirelessly for our community. Um, well, Justice has been involved with TPC since its inception. Um, the organization has, was inspired by the fight for justice for Rita Hester in 1998. MTPC has become one of the leading advocacy and activism organizations lobbying for policies and protections for the trans community in Massachusetts. Under the leadership of Trey Andre Valentine, NTPC has grown from a mostly volunteer-based organization to one that hires a diverse staff and board that truly represents our community. Tonight, <laughs> we diverse. <laughs> Three generations right here, okay? Yeah. <laughs> um, so we tonight. At least five generations four. across four. the whole. There we go. Four, five, yeah. Oh my goodness, amazing. We're five, everything's good. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long couple of months, y'all. So tonight, we celebrate over 20 years 
of hard work and success. This success would not have been possible without the support of our community. That's you all. However, this celebration is also a call to action. Given the current climate around trans health and trans lives in the nation, Massachusetts remains a beacon of hope. We must prepare for what's to come and support this organization to, <laughs> thank you, to continue our fight for freedom for black trans women. And if black trans women are free, we all benefit. So you all know the drill. This is the time to give, it, to give out and to give big. We're going to send all of these lovely people with me here on stage, um, but with y'all, uh, one last time, any of these folks with the gift bags, um, or this bag, um, <laughs> to collect your cash, your check gifts, and you can scan that code on the back of your program card or head over to the registration table. You did a great job, DJ. Thank you. Thank you. Listen, this is us, y'all. This is us. And what an incredible evening. What time is it? Somebody give me a time check. It is not even 8 o'clock yet, and we're done. I am so happy. <laughs> Now it's party time. But really, what an incredible evening. I don't know about you, but I'm inspired. I'm also tired. Inspired and tired. Inspired and tired, yes. Which is a perfect segue to wrapping up our evening. Yes. yes. I want to thank, thank, yes. Let me bring out the Trini accent for you right now. Let me thank the Crystal Ballroom, the staff and the bartenders. The Femmes, what up for the Femmes? They coming back again? Fresh food generation. Let me tell you, your food feeds the soul. Thank you all so, so much. Our ASL interpreters, Brenna and Gabe, thank you. Our awardees, Carmen, Taj, Tisha. Our MTPC staff. And steering committee. Oh, okay, L. You're now coming up. Come on, baby. Come on. I'll go get them. <laughs> and finally, all of our supporters. That's you, 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 and you, and you, and you. Yes, yes we are deeply grateful for you all being alongside us in this journey. Thank you for your support and for your belief in our work and our vision to what a vibrant and inclusive future for all. And with that, we bid you a good night. Yeah.